Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke. Tree houses are pretty sweet. <laughs> We're making this one even better by giving it an elevator that doesn't use electricity. Up, up, and away he goes. In a previous video, we designed a treehouse pulley system, but it was on a small scale. I talked about how I wanted to put it in an actual treehouse, and a lot of commenters wanted to see that as well. Well, today is finally the day. All right, so he posted online, trying to find a treehouse to do this video, and luckily, Randy and Junior were kind enough to let us use their treehouse. Uh, it's like the perfect amount of rustic and chic and all the wonderful things you want a treehouse to be. Oh, look, there it is. Literally hidden within the trees. While I was out scouting the treehouse, Nate was back at the studio working out the bugs in our elevator system. With a single pulley system like this one, the heavier weight will lift the lighter weight. If we have more weight up in the tree, it will lift us up when it's no longer secured. We aren't trying to change either our own weight or the counterweight, so how can we use these simple machines to go down instead of up? If we use a double pulley, you distribute the work over a longer distance. It should take half as much weight to lift it, so the same mass that went up before should now go down. By attaching a fixed single pulley and a moving double pulley system, we can use the same weight to go up into the tree and to ride back down just by switching ropes. While building the scale model of the elevator, I realized a few problems that we might run into. We want to figure out how to resolve those problems before we move to the big one. To start out, we have a beam up ahead and we've got a pulley on it. So that's a good start. This bucket here has some sand in it. Oh, and this right here is a weight that represents, well, me. As long as the weight in the bucket is more than the weight of the person down below, it's gonna raise up. That's a good start. It's getting us up into our treehouse. I don't really think this exercise weight looks enough like me, so we're gonna use something that does. That's better. So our first test, I'm down here at the bottom. We've got a weight up at the top. What happens if I hit whatever release mechanism we're using? That looked painful. That's one of the things we don't want to have happen. Let's see what we can do to stop it. We're gonna need some way to hold this end of the rope down on the ground until we're ready to launch up into the tree. Something that we can get onto the rope and then release so that it activates as a mechanism sending us up. Now, gravity doesn't scale, so we are going to need to use the full size thing to figure out exactly what weights to use. However, we don't wanna put any living humans at risk, so we need a volunteer that we don't have to worry about hurting. Hello. Now we actually already did a little bit of work on this tree house just to make it a, a little more secure and more presentable. It had been sitting up in this tree for quite a while and so we added just some structural support and some paint. Partly that was just so it looks good on camera. But now that we have uh, all of this set up, it's time to start building the parts that we actually need. And the first main component that we're gonna need for this elevator is a support beam up above us. We need something that we can attach all of our ropes and pulleys to that's gonna be nice and strong. Grace is holding up one end of it. We have a four by six beam of pressure treated wood. It's 10 feet long, and that should get us from that branch over to this branch. And we are gonna have to get a little bit creative with how we attach it, because that branch isn't in the right spot to just for it to rest on top of but I think it's gonna work. We did run into an issue on the other side of the treehouse because our beam wasn't quite long enough, so we created a shelf and drove lag bolts through the beam and into the tree to make it as strong as possible. Next, we screwed in some heavy-duty eye bolts that we'll attach our pulleys and carabiners to. Then we thread the ropes through the pulleys. Next, we attached our weights to the pulleys. And finally, we slowly started testing some different weights until we got it just right. Definitely fast. That was way faster. <laughs> that worked that's so well. That's so good! Woo! That's Do you fantastic. think the same way to hold, pull me down? Here we go! Oh no. Grace is not heavy enough. Barely too much weight for Grace. I'm lifting just, just a little, a little bit. bit was I could control your speed. I was just like. Now that everything was working for the down function of the elevator, we needed to hook up ropes that would move us up. The double pulley makes it so half of the mass can move the weight, but it only goes half as far. So we needed to figure out how to pull the weight up the rest of the way. 
To fix this problem, I built a hand crank using some available materials. This will help us pull the weight all the way back up to the top more easily. With that put together, our elevator system should now be fully operational. But before we try it ourselves, we have one more test to run. We do want to make sure that the counterweight is properly calibrated to the individual user because uh, what's his name again? Sheldon. Sheldon. We want to make sure that the counterweight is properly calibrated to the individual user because as Sheldon here is about to demonstrate, if the weight is too much, you're going to go too fast. How'd that go for Sheldon? Not good! Spooky. Grace has her foot in a loop on the rope. That rope is currently being held in place by a trigger mechanism. The rest of the rope is going up into the tree where it's going from one pulley to another connecting to our counterweight, which is specifically measured to raise her up at a safe speed. Grace? Now Grace has her foot in a loop on the black rope, which again goes through a couple pulleys and goes to the counterweight. But this time, instead of being a fixed attachment, it's going to another pulley on the weight. It's then fixed again up at the top of the treehouse. This should mean that half as much weight will lift our counterweight back up to the top, or at least halfway up to the top. Grace? Whee! You can see the weight isn't all the way back up yet, so we can't use it to ride up. So we need to pull that weight the rest of the way up. But we built a machine to help us out with that. and then you're ready to go back up. Now this was a proof of concept. We don't recommend that you build this at home. It's pretty dangerous. <laughs> that said, were I building it again, I think there are a few things that I would change for safety and ease of use considerations. First off, uh, after I dialed in the weight just right, I wouldn't want giant bags of sand like this. I'd try and consolidate it down into something smaller and denser, maybe using barbells or whatever and weld it all into a small steel box so that it could be as little as possible. That also makes it easy when you have multiple kids. If you have two adults using it, you can just very easily clip one over to the other. The next safety feature we would put in is putting a pin in our release mechanism so you can't accidentally just walk walk by and whoop, send it on up. And finally, our reeling mechanism for cranking the weight up to the top after you've ridden down worked well for what we were doing, but it could certainly be improved. A larger wheel, longer handles, and a ratcheting system that makes sure it can't release if you let go of the handles would all make that easier to use and much safer. Overall, I'm super happy with how this turned up. We can go up, we can go down. It works the way I envisioned it six years ago or something like that, and the way I made the small scale a couple years ago in a video. That's pretty awesome. We got the tree house for the rest of the day, so uh, now what? Well, you know what goes well with tree houses is tacos. Tree house tacos. Tacos. Today's video and tacos are sponsored by Bespoke. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands and it's free to join. Every month they introduce their members to cool new products. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on the quiz you take when you sign up. The HO box, the Weekender bag, and the Forge knife is a pretty great deal. Every box has around $70 in value but only costs $45. One of our favorite things is that 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small businesses, many of which are based right here in the US. Thankfully, we like all these products, but if we didn't, you only pay for what you want. Before the box ships, you'll get to decide if you want to keep it, swap it out for something different, or skip the month entirely for no charge. We love the taco stand and the molcayete. They make company taco night way better. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter TKOR20 at checkout. Or go to bspk.me slash TKOR20 to help support the channel and get your own Taco Night kit. Why is the elevator always sick? Because it keeps coming down with something. Do you know why they call them lifts in the UK, but elevators in the United States? Because we're raised differently. I was looking for a joke in an elevator. But it let me down. That didn't land very well. But I did. <laughs>